it's Hawkin with Top Don, and today we're going to do a basic overview walkthrough video of Top Don's newest thermal imager, which is the TC003. Sometimes you will also see this camera labeled as the TC View, uh, but again, the common language that you'll see usually referred to as is TC003. So you're probably asking yourself a couple of basic questions about the hardware. Well, this particular thermal imager is actually a micro Android tablet, which happens to be uh, fully self-contained. It's also an open Android system, which allows you to install APKs or apps uh, on your own, provided that you can find the files on the internet. There is no Google Play Store. However, if you are able to locate the APK installation files, then you will be able to install additional apps on the micro tablet. Now, keep in mind, it does have limited storage space, so you will not be able to add an unlimited number of apps to the uh, tablet. However, uh, again, it's really nice to be able to add some of the other apps that you might want to use with this uh, very portable and convenient platform. So today we're going to take uh, just a brief walkthrough and show you kind of the user interface of the tool and uh, some of the great highlighted features that you will find really valuable. Now, if you haven't taken a chance to go uh, on our YouTube channel and watch our overview video that's about 30 minutes long on thermal imaging and how it can be used for automotive diagnostics, make sure you go take a look at that video. Uh, that video will cover a lot of common uses and maybe some uses you've never thought of uh, with regards to thermal imaging diagnosis on automotive applications. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the tool itself. Uh, really not much to go over on the external hardware other than uh, it does have a USB-C charging port uh, for interfacing or you can also plug it into the computer uh, for pulling files off and things of that nature as well. So we're really not going to look at the hardware in terms of that kind of stuff, uh, but let's go ahead and connect to the tool. Uh, we're going to do it two ways. We're going to show you the screen kind of backed out a little bit, the actual tool, and then we're also going to show you uh, the team viewer screen where we actually can see everything on the screen a little bit clearer since, of course, when we're filming a camera screen, sometimes uh, it doesn't always work so well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're over here at the tool, and now we are going to take a look at the basic user interface. So the tool itself here is pretty compact and convenient and easy to use. The user interface is very straightforward and simple. Basically, we have essentially uh, four primary quadrants. We're going to work backwards uh, just to go through each of these so you can see what each one of them has. So first we're going to go to personal information and in here we can manage and modify basic settings. So temperature correction. This is where you can set the ambient temperature which helps the device more accurately determine the temperature of objects that you are providing to it. Uh, the distance at which you are targeting the object that you are trying to determine the temperature on and the emissivity which if we scroll down here a little bit we can see it gives you common emissivity of various substances now you can google this as well so this is just something you want to make adjustments to to ensure the best accuracy of the tool uh, when you are using it i've found that if we're just looking for comparative analysis this isn't necessarily crucial but if you want to have the utmost accuracy, then this is most certainly something you want to look at. Temperature units allows us to simply change from Fahrenheit to Celsius by hitting the little toggle here. Feedback is where we can submit feedback if there are any issues with the tool. Version allows us to check the system for updates. We can check for updates here and view all of the other disclosures and whatnot. Clearing the cache can resolve any kind of glitches that may happen with the tool. Uh, remember, this may delete a bunch of your data, so you wanna make sure you back everything up before you would clear the cache. So that accurately summarizes the personal information section. Now we're gonna to go to the gallery. Gallery is pretty self-explanatory, but it allows us to view previously recorded images and or video. So we'll actually show you here. You'll be able to see the, uh, the view screen here. And if we look at the view screen here, it's almost a seamless transition between here and here. 
But we can actually see a little bit clearer here on the screencast version. So we're looking at different images that we've taken with the tool and we can open them up and review them after the fact if we want to. Obviously we can see the quality of the images being captured here is really good. This happens to be a blower motor that was defective and shorting out. Here's a circuit board. And obviously, like I said, we can also look at videos. So quite a wide variety of uh, things that we can store here and review after the fact. Now you can also send these images to yourself. Now I have installed the Yahoo Mail APK. So I actually have the ability to email files via the Yahoo Mail app. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that because this does not have Google Play, you will not be able to use Gmail app. However, Yahoo Mail app actually allows you to add a Gmail address and email from your Gmail, just like as if you had the Gmail app. So that's what I use if I'm gonna use Gmail is the Yahoo Mail app. And again, installing that is actually pretty straightforward. We can make a video for you on that if you are interested. Just let us know in the comments if that's something you would like to see covered. But again, we can see some other pictures here that we've captured, so brake rotors, things like that. So we'll back out here. Uh, temperature monitoring is another specialized function that the tool has. Basically here, we can set up a custom recording protocol. Uh, essentially, we can set it up to custom generate an image by focusing on a specific place on the screen with a dot. So we could hit this relay here with a temperature dot. And then we could say, okay, we want you to record the temperature at that particular spot. And now it's gonna graph it for us. So if we put our thermal imager on a tripod, and we set it up this way, we will actually be able to see the temperature change over time, which is pretty awesome, right? Something that I think is truly unique about the tool that you don't see on most thermal imagers, right? Most thermal imagers do not have the ability to manage and monitor thermal temperature on a given spot the way that this does. So you can see right now, it's showing that the temperature is actually very stable, which I would definitely say is quite a valuable thing to have uh, at your disposal, especially if we're dealing with a situation where we have a battery draw and we want to monitor a very specific fuse or relay. If you get yourself a tripod that is uh, kind of got a long reach neck, if you will, you could actually kind of snake it out over the fuse block and get the camera real close and pick exactly which fuse by hitting your dot and then you would be able to monitor this temperature over time and you could plug in your thermal imager TC003 to USB-C power and it would run for an extended period of time and monitor this. Now, we can also leverage the power of screen recording, which is another thing that's pretty cool here. So if we drag from the top of the screen down, it's not gonna like that when I try to do that with uh, TeamViewer here, but I'll walk over to the tool and you'll be able to see this. So. If we drag from the top of the screen down here, can actually turn on the screen recorder, and then we can record everything that's happening on the screen and have a video after the fact that we can review. So if we don't wanna have to watch the tool forever, we plug it into AC power with the USB-C port, we set up our temperature monitoring, and then we are able to do a screen recording, walk away from the tool, and basically let it do an automated test. We can draw a line across the screen if we want to, or we can also use plane. Plane is pretty unique. So we could actually draw a plane like this through those relays and then tell it to start recording. Pretty unique feature that you generally do not see on thermal imagers out there in the field. And look at that, it graphs the highest and the lowest temperature. So some pretty amazing capabilities here with the temperature monitoring section. So now we're gonna go into the main part of the tool, which is thermal imaging, as you probably expected. All right, so now when we go into thermal imaging, we have some additional capabilities here. So I'm gonna take you through each of these so that you can see 
exactly what we're dealing with. So over on the right here, we have automatic temperature ranging here. We have normal temperature ranging right here. Oops, <laughs> I crashed it there. That's my mistake, we'll give it a moment. So again, top right, we can automatic recognition, we can do normal temperature range, or we can do high temperature range. Obviously, we wanna choose what makes the most sense based on what we're analyzing. Right now, we're looking at a fuse block, so the normal temperature range should be sufficient. Now we're gonna click the little gear, and we have a few different settings we can play with right here. We have contrast, which allows us to change just how dynamic the picture is in terms of the color range. See, we kind of wash it out if we turn the contrast that direction. If we turn it the other direction, you can see it gets a little bit more intense, right? Generally speaking, I've found that the optimum setting is around 50%, but you can play with it based on your preferences. Now we've got details. If we change the details to a higher number, we get more precision and more clarity. If we change it to a lower number, you can see how it kind of makes the image a little more blurry and less defined. Again, optimum is probably in the center range. We can also rotate the image if we want to. We're not going to do that in this uh, video. And then we can also turn on or off our temperature gradient bar. And that temperature gradient bar just shows us what the different color scale means. Then over here, we have our various color types. So we'll go through each of these so you can see. That's kind of a gray scale. Here's the one we were on by default. Here's the next one. You can see it lights up in a really bright red, the warmer stuff. I like this temperature scale. This is a really good contrast. You can see the ECM that's right directly next to the fuse block is getting kind of warm. And there's that one. And that one. That one's really good too because you get a red for the warmer objects and you get gray and black for pretty much everything else. Very good dynamic contrast setting. This one here is kind of an enhanced version of the original one we were looking at. And they've actually added quite a few more settings to the tool from the original deployment of the uh, software. We can see that one there. And then the last one right there. And like I said, I really like this one because the red stuff is very easy to spot in contrast to everything else. The hottest objects stand out like a sore thumb. And then we also have some additional settings here under the little picture. Visible light lets us change this directly into a fuse block. Basically, you can use the regular camera on the, uh, on the tool to see the fuse block as it is, and it will highlight the hot spots. If we use infrared, it goes right back to what we were looking at. If we do dual light, it essentially overlays the two pictures together. Or we can do this one here, which is another enhanced form of picture gives us a really good, clear image of what's going on there. We're not gonna play around with Calibrate, but you do have the ability to play around with the calibration a little bit, depending on how much you wanna offset the picture. Now remember, it does change that every time you turn or on or off the app. So if you wanna change that again, you do have to reboot the app in order to change those settings. See how it goes back to its default setting. Okay, so now we're gonna go here and we're gonna go to dot. And this is real similar to the other section. We can tap a dot. You can say, hey, we wanna look at that spot on the screen. You can use your finger. Or is just like in the temperature monitoring where we can draw a line through a given object like this. And then it will plot the points of temperature across the line. Plane is gonna do, or give us the ability to draw a box. So if we use that, the box will actually monitor temperature everything inside the box. That's real helpful if you wanna uh, draw a box around a fuse block or an object and see if it changes temperature. This is a good way to do that. And then we can switch back to full image again, where we can delete all of our uh, drawings, if you will. 
So go back to full image, and now it's going to find the hot and or the high and the low temperature spots on the screen. So you can see there's quite a few options here. Now we also have the picture set up here where we can hit the three dots here for some additional settings. Can change basically the uh, the various camera capabilities here. So focus, we can take a photo or a video. You see how it lets us change this to video instead of picture. We can turn on or off the microphone if we want to record a video. So we could narrate our video. If we found something anomalous on a vehicle, we could actually narrate the video and walk around uh, with the thermal imager video on. So this would be a great way to show a customer, hey, we're gonna walk around and show you all four of your wheel bearings. And this wheel bearing is 30 degrees hotter than this wheel bearing, which is a great way to show your customer uh, why there is a problem with a given component. And then we also have some additional options here where we can put a watermark on the picture and we can turn on burst shooting, which is kind of like uh, when you see a high powered camera and you hear that click, 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 click. It's basically going to fire the shutter repeatedly in order to uh, basically take a sequence of images in rapid succession. Now we can also access the gallery directly through this, which you see right here. And we'll go back. So a ton of user control on the interface here. So again, you can see the app has just so many capabilities uh, with respect to pretty much everything related to thermal imaging. You're gonna be very impressed by this tool. Remember, go and watch our video that we did on uh, thermal imaging, where we talked about some of the ways that you can use your thermal imager for automotive diagnostics. So I think you'll find the TC-003 is really up to the task when it comes to thermal imaging. And I think you'll be really pleased and uh, impressed with its capabilities on the whole. So again, thanks for taking the time to watch our video on this short walkthrough with the TC-003. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and watch all of our videos. And as always, I'm Hawken, so thanks again for watching.